ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to the Valve Time News for October 1st, 2015. Each week we bring you the biggest talking points regarding Valve and the community. With Valve in the middle of developing a bunch of new software and hardware, it's not that often these days that we see something that really surprises us. That changed this past week as Valve revealed their recent research into photogrammetry, a practice typically used to create 3D environments from 2D photographs. This being Valve, you would probably bet they aren't simply playing around with cool photos, and you'd be right. Put simply, Valve's work has involved taking numerous photographs of specific locations before using complex mathematical algorithms and software to combine the images into textures which can then be applied to models as a 3D space. When you add high-quality virtual reality such as the HTC Vive and its room-scale experience, you apparently get some pretty compelling and unsettling images when the space is viewed from certain angles. Of course, these environments can then be modified and interacted with from a game design perspective, allowing players or items such as Peabody to be placed into a level and viewed in 3D, making for some pretty surreal images. Photogrammetry is, of course, far more complex than we make it sound here, and the technology is far from perfectly usable, but it's interesting to hear about the new research Valve are undertaking, and we recommend reading the three blog posts released by Valve designer and ex-community modder Adam Foster if you want to learn more. From the look of the images, it seems as if Valve currently have at least three to four test environments currently boasting this technology, and it'll be interesting to see how it progresses and possibly finds its way into more fully-fledged products in the future, if anything comes of it at all. Outside of a few key announcements, little was known about Dota 2's regional majors prior to this past week as the first ever Fall Major was recently unveiled as the Frankfurt Major. The event will take place at the Festhalle Mesa in Frankfurt, Germany between November 16th and 22nd and will feature 16 teams fighting for a total prize pool of $3 million, emulating the scale and importance of the International without going too crazy. Unlike the International, the Frankfurt Major will be produced by ESL and will actually be free to attend for all but one day of the event. Those looking to attend the final day of the event and therefore the Grand Finals will need to have purchased a ticket for 50 euros during one of the two periods of time on Sunday, September 28th. The blog post revealing this information also discussed the upcoming release of the first seasonal compendium, the status of the upcoming desert terrain map, and the future of the Axe Immortal, an apparently extremely long, appropriately titled long-form comic. More details regarding which can be found over on the Dota 2 website. With the qualifiers for the Frankfurt Major coming up in just a few days, Valve finally got around to adjusting Dota 2's in-game balance with the introduction of the 6.85 update released last Thursday. The patch, while smaller than most typical balance updates, introduced a large number of alterations for numerous heroes, items, and mechanics, reducing the effectiveness of Lashrak, Techies, and Storm Spirit, while improving that of Elder Titan and Doom. There's obviously a lot more specific and granular changes than that, but we'll leave you to discover those on your own should Dota 2's in-game balance interest you. The update thankfully wasn't all focused on the game's balance, as numerous changes to the main dashboard were also made. As seen here, the dashboard now features a more focused layout with each box representing a different area of the deeper interface, including most recent games, shop items, spectator games, etc. New neighborhood channels were also added, automatically providing a way for Dota players to communicate and play with others in their local area, making it easier than ever before to troll your neighbors. The TF2 community quieted down again this past week after it was revealed by the Invasion Update team that the community-created patch would not be launching until after the Gun Metal campaign concludes on September 30th, 2015, with the closest possible release date for the update now standing as October 1st. It was up to Valve to fill the gap running up until the release, which they used to further improve the ever-developing pastime game mode. The main additions include healing the Jack Carrier to full health upon pickup and a new unstable mode to test new mechanics away from the core game. The biggest unstable mechanic introduced thus far varies the throw speed and arc patterns for the Jack depending on which of the three attack, defense, or support class groups the player is currently in. A second version of the pastime warehouse map was also added, sporting a different scoring system. This new version of the map has players run into a goal with the Jack rather than simply throwing it into one from long range. The pastime team over on Escalation also unveiled a new official Steam group for the game mode, so be sure to head on over and join it if that sounds interesting to you. While this update definitely focused on the pastime game mode, it wasn't without its invasion references as a few seemingly minor changes introduced elsewhere in the patch are actually rather important to the upcoming event. Changes such as fixing custom item underscore team flag models not drawing properly is heavily believed to be related to a new game mode coming as part of the update alongside several community maps. With that said, it won't be long until we get our hands on the Invasion content for ourselves, so sit tight! 
With community-created updates becoming more and more common for Team Fortress 2, it's no surprise that Valve are more or less turning this year's Halloween event over seemingly in its entirety. A new blog post released this past week revealed Valve are apparently too busy working on other non-invasion updates to put much effort into this year's Scream Fortress festivities, forcing them to request the community to submit their best maps, cosmetic items, and taunts to the Steam Workshop in the hopes of being included. Unlike previous years where community items have accompanied an official map with a Halloween theme, it sounds as if Valve will only be releasing community-made levels this year, which unfortunately will likely not feature any of the high-quality gimmicks which have made previous events so memorable, but we guess time will tell. To be eligible, Steam Workshop items need to be uploaded before October 18th, 2015 while also being tagged in the Halloween category. Unlike previous years, Halloween items released during this event will have their Halloween-only restrictions removed, allowing them to be viewed and used all year round, something which could potentially cause significant damage to the game's readability if outlandish items like these are allowed in. If we briefly jump back to recap the other update we mentioned at the start of this segment, Valve mentioned the next major update aside from Invasion and Scream Fortress will be released before the end of the year, likely as a Christmas update which will feature new maps, cosmetics, and an all-new campaign with its own contracts and collections. The TF2 team's to-do list also includes the upcoming release of the Manpower game mode alongside a new map and finishing off the likes of competitive matchmaking, among others. While very lacking in regards to gameplay modifications, this week's update for Counter-Strike Global Offensive did introduce some interesting new cosmetic items in the form of 14 music kits. What if we told you one kit in particular was developed by Half-Life series composer and designer Kelly Bailey, who previously left Valve in 2010 before returning as a contractor to work on unannounced projects alongside Mike Moraski and the company's other composers. The pack features the following tagline, Kelly Bailey, composer of Valve's Half-Life series, creates an arsenal of apocalyptic new music inspired by the darker side of the Half-Life universe. Pretty neat, huh? While definitely different than Half-Life's own music, the kit definitely has a similar vibe, and it's just good to hear something of this nature released by Valve and created by Kelly Bailey. A link to a preview video for this particular kit will be available in the video description and we're sure you're capable enough to find previews for the rest of the kits if any of the other 13 composers catch your eyes or ears. With the initial wave of third-party Steam machines launching in the last few months of this year, Valve are preparing the Steam OS and Big Picture interface to make them far more suitable to attach to a computer worth several hundred or a thousand dollars or pounds. A Steam Client Beta update released last week focused on improving Big Picture mode in particular, with key areas such as the store and library receiving partial redesigns while also keeping them controller-friendly. There's not really a whole lot more to say about the redesigns other than you should definitely go and check it out if Big Picture has ever interested you. As announced several months ago, this past week saw Chet Falzik take to the stage at EGX 2015 for a new talk entitled The Year Ahead in VR. During the talk, Chet covered a number of talking points specific to the future of VR and the HTC Vive, discussing potential technological advancements and current restraints. Chet also reiterated previous comments he is known to have made in private, including the unrealistic nature of a totally wireless Vive headset. The talk obviously features a lot more information than that, so it's definitely worth checking out if you're interested in hearing what Chet has to say or if you're generally interested in the state of VR. Given Chet's talk on Thursday, Nick and Glenn didn't quite manage to catch it at EGX 2015 itself, instead having to sit back and watch it from home like the vast majority of us. However, the pair were on site at EGX in Birmingham all weekend to check out a bunch of the latest games and technology, a surprising amount of which were related to Valve in one way or another. While there, Nick and Glenn both got to try out numerous demos on the HTC Vive, while we also briefly talked to Valve's Chet Falazek in the HTC's Shen Ye. While we're going to keep the exact discussion points of an upcoming Spotlight video quiet for now, you can catch up on some of their EG exploits by checking out the live blog the pair tried and occasionally failed to run over on the SteamDB's website. It definitely provides a lot of information on other less Valve-related areas of the convention that we won't necessarily be touching on in our upcoming video. As for the video itself, you can expect to see it released sometime in the next week or two, so stay tuned! While you wait for our upcoming video, be sure to check out our latest Valve Time Spotlight episode released this past Friday, which looks at our writer Jake's recent experiences at PAX Prime 2015 in late August, where he got to extensively try out the Steam Controller and HTC Vive. The video acts as one of our most extensive looks at Valve's hardware released thus far, but it also covers each of the Vive's demos Jake tried out during his trip, including the likes of Valve's Dota 2 Secret Shop and other third-party titles such as Blue the Encounter, Call of the Starseed the Gallery, and Tiltbrush. 
We'll go ahead and admit the video's release was well overdue, but you should go ahead and check it out anyway as it acts as a nice continuation of the video Nick made several months ago talking about the HTC Vive in the Playhub's Game Jam. We're not quite done talking about the Vive, however, as we are unsurprised to see the team over at Node Studios upload yet another high-quality video of a VR demo. With the two big names of Portal and Dota now behind them, the team focused on Longbow, a Unity demo created by Valve that we've known about for a long time, despite there being absolutely no footage of it released until now. As the name suggests, the demo involves using archery equipment to shoot at targets and balloons, with one Vive controller acting as the bow while the other simulates pulling back of the arrows. During the video, the team comment on the powerful haptic feedback of the two controllers, claiming it excellently sells the feeling of firing an arrow, which is something we've heard tossed around a few times over the last few months. While probably not as immediately exciting for most of you out there, this longbow video should help prove why you don't need big IPs to sell good virtual reality and why smaller experiences such as this will still prove extremely powerful to users, so make sure to check it out. And that brings us to the end of a rather lengthy and varied week of Valve news. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch TV, and to join in on the conversations over on the ValveTime.net community forums. Thanks for watching and bye for now.